Psyche's ITC pass rates for the January 2024 paper was released on Friday afternoon. And as always, for me, I get the good and the bad news. So for the students who passed, congratulations. Amazing achievement. Well done. And I think especially students who were repeat students, um, seriously well done. To come back and to, you know, to nail that exam after failing... Very tough, very difficult. So serious congratulations to those of you who made it. And I, I really hope that you'll be having some really, really great celebrations. This video, however, is dedicated to those of you who didn't make it. And I want to chat a little bit about some stuff relating to that. I've got a lot of emails from students who didn't make it. And for those of you who have been working with me for ITC, I will continue to work with you until we get this right, until we get this done. So you are not alone. <laughs> I will not leave you. You are not alone. We will work together. Um, so the overall pass rate is 67%. The pass rate for repeat students is 17%. That's really, really low. So as always, your best chance of passing ITC is on your first attempt. A 17% pass rate for repeat students is absolutely heartbreaking. It means that less than two out of 10 repeat students pass that exam. Obviously, there's a massive amount of questioning around why is this the case? Why does this decrease so much? Why does the pass rate drop? What is going on with this? At the moment, I'm interested in how you're feeling, where you are, what you're thinking of at this particular point in time. The first thing I want to say is that I know that you put an enormous amount of effort into this. It's easy to say, well, you didn't do enough. And if you did do enough, you would have passed. It's very easy to say that. But the reality for most students is they put their heart and soul and their life into this. And while there obviously are things that they need to be doing differently, they're putting in an enormous amount of effort. And I really respect that. I respect the effort, the sacrifices, the continued sacrifices after undergrad and CTA. And if you have repeated it, picking yourself up and doing it again, that is, that is something to be respected. It's very difficult to see that when you're in that position and you've been knocked to the floor, but I do, I really do respect that. It's gut-wrenching. And I think that you need to allow yourself to feel that. It is heartbreaking. It is gut-wrenching. For the students that I know, this is, you know, one of the most important goals in their life that they've been working to for so many years. And to not make it is, it's absolutely heartbreaking. I also want to encourage you to pick yourself up and to take, to step forward. And there's a few reasons for this. When students walk away from this particular qualification journey because they failed, whether it's at CTA or at ITC or even APC level, one of the things that I find is that a sense of inferiority generally follows them through their career. You can be a perfectly successful accountant, a perfectly successful business person without being a CA. However, if you have tried to qualify as a CA and you walked away from it because you failed exams, I generally find that it takes many, many years, if ever, to get rid of that sense of I'm not good enough. And if I was smart and if I was capable of being a great professional or a great business person or a great accountant, then I would have passed. My concern for you is that if you don't do this, if you don't complete that journey, I am more concerned about the mental effect that that has on your career, the decision making and the fact that in future, you're more likely to step back from opportunities because you think that you're not smart enough. In reality, you're incredibly smart, you're incredibly capable, you're incredibly intelligent, you've done an incredible amount of work, you've achieved an enormous amount but you will always hold yourself as slightly worse off. That concerns me more than the qualification. I'm more interested in how you see yourself than the letters that you have behind your name. So I want you to think about that. I realize that you're absolutely exhausted. I realize that you're demoralized. I realize that it is, it is gut-wrenching and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes with this 
going back to offices, seeing people who have passed, feeling like you're behind, feeling like one earth went wrong. I understand and I recognize all of that. But my concern is more about what you take from this for the rest of your life and your career and how this impacts you and your belief in yourself. I also want to say that this exam is not about intelligence. And that is so difficult to understand when you're there. Um, you're absolutely smart enough, which has been proven by the fact that you have passed CTA. But this is about different skills. This is about something slightly different. And this is where it gets really tricky. I'm terrified that students interpret their failure as an indication of intelligence when it isn't. It's an indication that there's a set of skills and that there's some stuff that needs to be done differently. But it absolutely does not mean that you're not smart enough to do it. Something needs to change. You need some new skills. You need some new tools. Or you were working on the skills. You were working on the tools and you weren't quite where you needed to be. It's kind of like you were running a race and you didn't quite finish. You know? You're not at zero, it's just that your preparation wasn't quite enough. You need to do a little bit more. And the beauty of this, well, I know it's a tough word to say, is that you have an opportunity to finish the race. It's kind of like, I almost want you to see it as extending the finish line to June, you know? Maybe you were working on the skills and you were working on the stuff, but you didn't quite get there. You have the ability to bridge that gap and keep going. You don't need to start from scratch. You don't need to wipe out everything you've done. You need to bridge that and, and kind of build up those extra few percent. You still, the finish line is still there. It's just that you kind of need to do a few, you need to take a few more steps. You do not need to start from scratch. You do not need to start from zero. You do not need to redo everything you've ever done. It's like you were almost there, but you need some more work. You need some more something, whatever that is. And so the deadline has been extended, if, if that makes any sense. So easy to say, I know. Um, when you write exams like this, one of the things I find is that students are so focused on this exam, obviously, that they're not really looking at the bigger picture. When students are in CTA, I always encourage them to look at ITC and to talk about what's going on in ITC because your CTA, your PGDA is preparing you for the ITC exam. So you need to know what's coming. You need to know what you're working towards because that's what you're preparing for. That's what, that's what your eye is on. It's very easy to get so obsessed with this particular exam that you're not thinking about what's coming next. And it's really important because each of these levels are supposed to prepare you and build you up for the next one. Now, between ITC and APC, there are some massively fundamental differences. Those exams are massively, significantly different. And APC has removed a lot of the stuff that you feel gets in the way of ITC, right? So... The fact that you get the case study in advance, the fact that you have more time, the fact that you can take information, you, you have the ability to work on all the stuff you know, you know, the topics and the industry and, and, and the standards, et cetera, that are relevant for, for the information or for the exam before you get into the exam. So the types of things that you feel are big challenges in ITC. I don't know what they're going to ask me. I don't know what to prepare. I don't know what industry it is. You know, I don't, I don't know what stuff, what topics I'm looking at. That's been removed, and yet the pass rate is not good. That begs the question, how are people who have passed ITC and have had the stuff that they felt was the biggest challenge in ITC They've had this removed and yet they're still failing. What is going on? Now, I don't want to get into a discussion technically about why this is or what's going on there. My point is just, I want you to take a step back and go, I've got to be aware of what's coming next. I've got to be aware that whatever's happening in that exam is impacting what's happening in this exam. Because this exam is intended to prepare you for that exam. In a lot of cases, 
it's the underlying skills. And I put a video up on my channel um, a few days ago about, you know, the underlying skills and, and the sort of the holistic skills that that's required in order to pass the concept of you know, application, communication, planning, systematic thinking, et cetera, et cetera. You can go and take a look at that. But the point is we have a tendency to overly focus on knowledge and theory for, for some very obvious reasons. But if the knowledge and theory part has been removed, or if the knowledge and theory limitations, if you will, has been removed from the next board exam and students are still failing, it's got to be an indication that something else is missing in your preparation. And this is what I want you to look at and think about. And the reason that I'm saying this now is because I want you to shift away from the feeling of I'm not smart enough. I can't do this. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I, clearly I'm just not intelligent enough for this. And I want you to realize that something different is going on. I don't want you looking at this as though you're not smart enough to do this. It's very difficult to do. I need you to look at this and say, I need new tools. I need something else. I need to take a step back and ask myself, what is missing? Not let me go back and study financial instruments, but what is going on? What is the bigger picture of the profession? What is the bigger picture of the qualification journey? And what is happening in the next exam? And is that filtering through? Is that what's causing the the challenge here. It makes perfect sense. If the next exam has a high failure rate, then this exam, and this exam is intended to prepare them for that, this exam will change and adjust to make sure that the people who pass this exam will be better prepared for the next exam. It makes sense, right? So obviously, when whatever's happening in this exam, changes that you're seeing in this exam are because of the next exam. If students are not passing that next exam, obviously the thing is going to be, well, what do we need to change in this exam in order to ensure that someone who comes out of this exam is better prepared for that exam? So whatever's causing the, whatever's causing the damage there is starting to filter in and is causing damage here. I want you to be asking, okay, perhaps I need some new tools. I do not want you sitting and thinking that you're not smart enough for this. Picking yourself up after something like this is gut-wrenching. In 10 years time, you will not feel the pain, but you will feel the consequence of your decision. The difficulty is in the moment, the emotions, the exhaustion, the mental energy, the disappointment, all these things in the moment is going to impact your decision or can impact your decision. In 10 years time, you won't feel the exhaustion. You won't feel all of these emotions. You will heal from them, but you will live with the consequences of whatever decision you make. If you walk away from this, because it's too hard to pick yourself up. It is completely understandable, completely understandable, but you will live with the consequences in 10 years time where you are going to say, if only I'd have tried, if only I had have done something different, if only I had have, I could have stuck it out. You are stronger than you think. Look at what you've already accomplished. You are stronger than you think. Everybody that I've worked with who has achieved their goal after falling over, picking themselves up, failing. I know people who have redone CTA and then gone back to ITC and passed. I have never come across someone who has said to me, you know what, Yvonne, it actually hasn't been worth it. It wasn't worth it. Every single person I've ever spoken to who has redone stuff, who has repeated stuff, has said, it was worth it, both for their career, but, but mainly for that personal sense of accomplishment of, I set out to do something really difficult and I thought I wasn't gonna achieve it and I was terrified that I wasn't going to achieve it and I actually did. As tough as it is, I want you to try and separate 
your emotions from the decisions that you're going to make in the next few weeks. I respect your emotions. I respect how you feel. I understand how you feel. I validate how you feel. But I want you to have the best consequences, which means you need to be making decisions you need to be making decisions based on what's best for your future and best for your future self, not based on how you're feeling at the moment. When you chose a tough qualification, you probably thought you were choosing a tough qualification because the content is tough. <laughs> the volume is tough. You know, the, the work is tough. The calculations are tough. The details and the theory is tough. But that's not what makes stuff challenging. What makes journeys challenging is the walls that we see in front of us. Every day you get up and you face that wall and you say, I don't know if I can get past this wall. This is what you're facing now. It's a wall. If I could absolutely guarantee you that you would get past this wall, you wouldn't have a problem putting in the effort. If I absolutely could guarantee it, if you could see the future and go, well, it's a guarantee that I'm going to make it, you would find the energy to break through that wall. The, the challenge and the toughness is in facing that wall and bashing at that wall and not knowing if, when, how you're going to get past that wall. Tough journeys are not tough because of the content. They're tough because of the fact that you have to keep bashing at a wall and you don't know when, how, if you're going to break through that wall. That is the tough journey. Your qualification is tough, not because of the content. If we gave you time and, you know, if we gave you lots of time and unlimited resources, except you get through the stuff, you know, you, it's not a problem. But what, what's, what's standing in your way is a wall that you don't know you can get past. And you're sitting in front of it and you're saying, it has stopped me thus far. I don't know if I can ever get through this wall. I don't know. I thought maybe, maybe I thought that I could and I was confident that I could and then I didn't. Maybe I didn't think I could and I tried and I couldn't and now I feel like I'm confirming that, that, that I couldn't. That is what's tough about your journey. And the mental strength that you need is not the strength to deal with financial instruments. You know, the, the strength that you need is the ability to stand up in front of that wall and take another swing and bash at that wall again and look around and go, what tools do I need to break through this wall? Do I have the tools and I need to work on them a little bit more? Do I not have the right tools? What do I need in order to break this wall down? I want the best for your future. 